Thank you very much. Our next speaker fled war and persecution in the Congo and she managed to become a refugee in this country because of the help of politicians that we have on this platform right now who worked hard and tirelessly to defend refugee rights. She then went on to become a lady councillor in Islington. Please give a very warm welcome to Councillor Micheline Longo. my sisters. If you remember when I spoke early on, I said, now I'm a politician because of Jeremy Corbyn. <laughs> Do you remember I said when I came in this country, I never said goodbye to my parents? Do you remember when I said I arrived in this country, I felt discrimination, but Jeremy stood behind me? on my behalf. I told you I couldn't speak a language, I couldn't speak English, but he spoke English on my behalf. <laughs> that is why I'm very proud to be a councillor in Jeremy constituency, as I said before. Please help me. I need your help. Because I need to introduce Jeremy. <laughs> he's my MP. He's my leader. Now, all together, we're going to work beyond Jeremy yes. to make sure, I repeat, to make sure, the next Prime Minister. Yes. Minister, we in this room, we're going to say, yes, we can. And yes, Jeremy is going to be the next Prime Minister. Thank you very much. Welcome, Jeremy. Thank 
speaking um, during today's conference and, and later on. I want to pay a particular thank you to Alf Dubs, who is apparently speaking a bit later on. Alf has spent his life opposing racism, standing up against anti-Semitism and any form of racism within our society. I thank Alf for all of his work and I look forward to working with him in the future as the years go on towards, or maybe not the years, maybe the months that go on towards a general election in this country. to be in the East End. I'm going to Cable Street to, to, commemorate, to commemorate those who stood up in 1936, those that stood up against the fascists coming in, the Irish community that went to defend the Jewish community, the Jewish community that helped to defend other communities. 1936 was a turning point, an absolute turning point in the battle against fascism in Britain. That demonstration sealed the fate of the British Union of Fascists and Mosley and ended up with a massive anti-fascist movement in Britain. It was that important and so many people went to it and made that contribution. I think we should remember them and remember the unity that helped to stop them in their tracks at that time. Because it's those points in history when people stood up to be counted, when many of the media said, oh, don't worry about Hitler, he's not really a problem. Don't worry about Oswald Mosley, he doesn't really mean what he says. Sadly, they both meant what they said. One of them did what he meant, the other one was prevented from doing what he intended to do. Later, take it many years later to the racism that the black and Irish communities faced in the 40s, 50s and 60s in Britain, the way in which the National Front began to grow in the 1970s. There are people here old enough to remember those of us that stood on Wood Green, in Wood Green at Duckett's Common to try and stop the National Front marching through on St George's Day in 1977 and there were many other examples like that. Racists always seek to divide. They always seek to blame somebody. They always fail to address the real issues that we face. I am not the only person in this room that cannot have been anything but disgusted by the rise in hate crime over the past few years across Europe and in Britain. Synagogues that have been daubed, mosques that have been attacked, individuals that have been spat up in the street, people that feel unsafe in a community they thought they were safe in and lived in and were happy to remain in that community. And since the Brexit vote, there's been a spike, a big spike, in hate crime and racist abuse. Always seeking to blame somebody else for the problems we have. Now, it's very easy to stir up racism, very easy to start blaming a minority. So you blame a Lithuanian because of the queue at the doctor's surgery, you blame a Jamaican because there's a shortage of school places. You blame any other group you can think of for whatever the problem is. And what do you do? You create a whole milestone, a whole vortex of vile racist behaviour. And you build up an atmosphere of hatred and suspicion all around you. And you know what? At the end of all that, you've built not one house, trained not one doctor, provided not one school. Confront this by legal means, because it is illegal, absolutely illegal. Confront it by supporting communities, but above all, confront it by reaching out to all our communities to come together. Because if you think of the great social progress that's been made in any society anywhere in the world, it's never been made by one community wanting something at the expense of another community. It's only achieved when all communities come together to demand the same thing. So, 
the issues we face at the moment across Europe are the rise of the far right, are the ways in which countries are responding to the refugee crisis in different ways. I would simply say this, there are more displaced people around the world now than any time in recorded history. There are desperate people dying in oceans and seas around the world trying to gain a place of safety. We read about this in historical times. We read about the bravery of Jewish people fleeing from Nazi Germany and how they were supported and welcomed. And it's right we do that. It's right we understand what went on at that time. And it's right that we understand what is going on at the present time. So we do two things. One is seek a political solution to the war in Syria and the places that are causing people to flee in the first place. Called by Nigel Farage and the kind of poster he put up during the, during the referendum. Those people that he put on that poster, they are farmers, they are nurses, they are teachers, they are doctors, they are engineers, they're all kinds of people. But he puts them down as a threat. Surely somewhere there has to be the hand of humanity, the hand of support to reach out to those people and ensure they do get a place of safety at the me in the meantime whilst we try to seek a political solution to where they're coming from. That has to be the right way forward. Don't allow those people who are so desperate to be demonised in the same way the refugees over the decades have been about what was said last week at the Tory party conference. I want to live in a society that understands our history, that understands the makeup of our communities, understands what humans want and want to do to support and help each other. Xenophobia will not do any of that. Racism will not do any of that. It becomes a code word for saying, well, it's okay to blame somebody else for our problems. If we're to deal with inequality, deal with housing problems, deal with unemployment issues. You do it together. You do it together by working together to ensure a fair and proper distribution of wealth and power within our society. Campaigning is very important. Sometimes campaigning can be very unpopular. And sometimes people who campaign get a lot of abuse. I don't wish to comment on the levels of abuse that are directed against some individuals, but I have personal experience of a lot of it. All I know is that eventually somebody understands that what you're saying has a lot of sense and a lot of merit in it. And when we come together, we can achieve change. When we come together in support of each other, we can achieve a great deal. Do not allow xenophobes and racists to divide us. Do not allow them to continue the problems of underfunding schools and housing and so many other things so so many children don't achieve the potential they could achieve. Think of the strength of communities together. Communities supporting each other together. Think of what they can achieve when we understand that diversity is not a problem, it's a strength. When a multicultural society is not a problem, it's a strength. I want to, I want to conclude by thanking all of you for all that you do to try and ensure we do have that decent, involved, caring society. And I want to thank all of you, many who have given lots of support to other people going through difficulties at any one time in their life. We don't pass by on the other side. We support each other because that is the kind of world in which we all want to live. Thank you very much.